This is Jay Richards at the Discovery Institute, and I'm at the COSM 2019 conference, and we've just come off of a panel on information technology and biology, and I'm here with uh, biotech CEO and friend Matt Schultz, who was on the panel. Matt, thanks for joining me. It's good to see uh, you. It's a pleasure. So how would you dis distill this, this panel? It was you and uh, Bhavik Parvis from now from Amazon and formerly uh, Google Glass and, uh, and Lindy Fishburne, who's uh, on the funding side of uh, information technology and biology. How would you sort of summarize the panel? Well, it's a, it's a pretty diverse group. In fact, yeah. I mean, there's a bunch of conversation as the panel is put together on what are, what are we going to talk about, <laughs> ranging from you know the computational side of it to the actual therapeutic side and finance. Um, so it, I think that, that it made it a pretty interesting conversation, really, because, mm -hmm. you know, to a great extent, we're working towards the same goals, but from very different angles. Yeah. Well, so what's the difference? I think the title of the panel was biotech, but in many ways, we're talking about something somewhat different, right? We're talking about, first of all, the, the kind of application of information theology to biology, but then uh, information technology in general connected to medicine and biology, right? Yeah, I was the only one who's like proper biotech therapeutic yeah. uh, on the panel, basically. And so, uh, you know, Lindy and Breakout Labs and Breakout Ventures yeah. fund biotechs for sure. Right. Um, I mean, we're, we're one of uh, many. But uh, yeah, the, the role of uh, information technology and uh, you know, artificial intelligence in medicine is yes. quite a different beast. It and really is. What I think is a little interesting in particular about what, what I'm working on is, it's, in some respects, it is the most literal uh, yes. amalgamation of information in life. Like, mm -hmm. we're actually rewriting information in life, like it's a you know, gene therapy. Um, but, uh, but for the most part, I think uh, you know, the expertise on uh, information in medicine is more on how do you analyze you know, conditions, symptoms, mm -hmm. like make diagnoses, like predict outcomes, that kind of thing. A lot of people ask questions about the problems of the regulatory regime in dealing with some of this new stuff. Uh, what's your opinion in terms of if there was a single primary impediment to real breakthroughs in this area? Is it regulation? Is it just the toughness of the subject? Is it something else? Well, I think you know the regulation in medicine is considerable, both in the time and expense it takes. Yeah. But I don't think it's the primary impediment to anything. In fact, in general, like I think particularly in gene therapy, the regulators have been you know very responsive to changes hmm. in technology. Um, I think you know really at its heart, building new treatments in biology is, is the science itself is hard, and the yeah. tools we use to build it are clumsy. And so. I mean, for most of human history, we used you know mashed up plants to treat diseases, yeah. and uh, and moving to like building viruses and mm -hmm. ex vivo cell therapies and manipulating DNA, like these is largely uncharted territory. And mm -hmm. the regulators have been, I'd say, doing an admirable job, really trying to stay on top of those changes and interact with the people building them. But, I mean, with, with that said, it. Obviously, like if you want to have a system that takes you a decade to get a drug approved, um, that's what or, we have. Yeah, it, it, uh, it will cost you yes. know, time and money. And I, I think you know, uh, there's great conversations that could be had about the how we weigh the risk of a drug versus the risk of a disease. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the right. the balance we've struck gives us the system we have today. And it's a uh, I mean, it's pretty comfortable to think, okay, well, there's there's smart people at the FDA who are making sure I don't get things that are dangerous. Mm -hmm. But uh, but if you're dying of a disease and, uh, the, and the, the, the cost the next benefit one that might come up, yeah, yeah, like, yeah it's, it's very different. And I think this, it may be in some respects less of what could be done about the regulatory environment mm -hmm. uh, as to what could be done to empower the patient. You know, right. Like, Right now, the one person who has no say in healthcare is the patient. It's and very they're, strange. They're at the bottom of the totem pole. It's, <laughs> and it's the same thing with the, 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 the economics of healthcare. I mean, yeah. you know, it's a third party payer problem. If you're a patient, you actually don't know what the price yeah. of the services that you're getting is. That's Are a problem. you crazy if you ask? And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And don't ask. Yeah, it's, it's totally wild. And, uh, you know, I. I think the patient should be, you know, have the right to be the arbiter of what goes into their body mm -hmm. and not just be subject to the whims of the system. Like right. it shouldn't be the, what the doctor says, the insurance company says, or, or even what the FDA says yeah. in that respect. Like I, I think it's, it's there for a reason. We, we sure. know why these things exist, but, uh, but there's, it's easy to imagine circumstances where you'd have a very different perspective on risk and right. reward. And I, I would love to see the patients get more power. Absolutely. Matt, thanks so much for joining me. Good to see you. Good to see you too. This is Jay Richards, and we're at the COSM 2019 conference. Thanks for joining us.